Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. celebration, this time of great joy when hope is restored, when life is renewed, and when Jesus bursts forth from the tomb, reminding us that love never dies. I'm Reverend Steph. I welcome you to our worship here on the Lewisport Pastoral Charge online community. We're glad that you've joined us for this great celebration. We're going to share in the joy of the Easter story we've walked through Holy Week. And today, it's culmination in the great good news of the greatest story ever told. I hope that you have prepared to join us for communion. As we celebrate, there is always much feasting and joy. Thank you. 
On this day, we rejoice in the glory of the resurrection. The tomb is empty. Death could not hold the Lord Jesus. His body saw no decay. His enemies did not win. The earth could not contain him. We are emboldened by the power of resurrection. We are encouraged by the hope of resurrection. We are enlightened by the truth of resurrection. So help us, dear God, to have a daily expectation that we will encounter the living Lord Jesus wherever we live. Help us to live in awe of your presence. Empower us to bring this message of resurrection into every dark and desperate corner of the world. In the name of the resurrected Lord Jesus, Amen. Jesus gave us the peace of the resurrection. When there was peace promised by Jesus, it meant everlasting peace. But it didn't just mean the absence of war and tension and noise. Peace means justice and hope and compassion, all wrapped into one. It's like when Jesus was forced to carry the cross. He carried it after being beaten down he could hardly walk, and yet he had to carry this cross. And so they dragged out Simon of Cyrene from the crowd and said, Help him carry that cross. And Simon lifted up the shoulders of Jesus and put the cross on him. And it is when we help one another take care of one another, help others to the, see the freedom and new life that Jesus offers the peace of the risen Christ.
lesson today. The good news that we share is John 20 verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have taken him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went to the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and that the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in. And he saw and believed for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken away my Lord, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, don't hold on to me because I've not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mary knew where to go, where to take the spices to anoint Jesus' body in the tomb. She and the other Mary went early in the morning, and were the first to find the stone rolled away. They had followed the two disciples that had taken Jesus' body off the cross and laid him in the tomb. She knew which garden she was in, and she was sure of where she was going. But when she arrived, it was not at all what she expected. She went to the tomb, and the stone was moved. And as she looked in, she became frightened and ran back to the other disciples. They thought they knew what was happening. They thought that their dreams and hopes had died and been laid in the tomb with Jesus. But now they went back to the tomb and they couldn't find him there. And they were scared. We would be scared too 
if we thought we knew exactly what had happened and what needed to be done. If we knew what process we needed to follow for burial, like the customs and traditions that they followed in the Jewish tradition. If we knew exactly what was supposed to happen, we would be frightened too, to find that the game had changed. Something was going on that they just couldn't understand. In fact, the disciples, Peter and the one that Jesus loved, left the tomb after they saw it and went back home, dejected depressed, hopeless. But Mary, Mary stayed in the garden and she cried. And as she was weeping, the tears of all time fell from her eyes. Her heart was broken. And even when Jesus arrived, she did not recognize him, whether it was from blurred vision or if it was because of hope that could not even be imagined, Mary didn't know it was Jesus right away. There could be many reasons for that. But when she heard his voice, when he called to her by name, that was the important moment. When he called her by name, she recognized her friend and saw before her the risen Jesus. It brought new hope, but also disbelief and confusion. We would understand confusion and disbelief as well. We look into the world that we're living in right now and it's still surreal. It's still unbelievable that we're living in our houses. We're isolating. We're in a place where we can't gather. It's still, after a year, still so surreal. But when we look at the tomb, the empty tomb of Easter, we see the freedom and the hope that bursts forth into our lives. And though we may not always understand all of the mechanics of it, our spirits are free to recognize Christ in all of our situations. Whether our eyes are blurred with tears or we're so joyous and enthusiastic that we miss the details of his face. Jesus is amongst us. And yet, this story, this hope, this brand new excitement and enthusiasm reminds us about the life of God that we're called to as we follow the risen Christ. Linnea Good, she's a biblical storyteller, she's a songwriter, she's a United Church member from British Columbia, and she's a deep thinker who often offers her thoughts and her gifts for us to contemplate in deep new ways. And for Easter this year, she sent a message that really hit home. These are her words. Don't get me wrong when I say that even good places can be tombs if God is not calling us there. What was perfect one year ago is not necessarily perfect later. It's not about the place. It's about where God's spirit will meet us in a convergence of resurrection energy. 
in the Easter story, we're not kept to that first Easter in that particular garden, but we're called to new life wherever we are. And sometimes even good things can be tombs for us if it's not where God has called us to be. We certainly understand the changes that have happened in our lives over the last year. And so this Easter, we greet God's spirit of resurrection with a brand new energy and excitement. We recognize amongst all of the places of our lives, all the dreams that we have and had, it all comes together when God calls us from the tomb and in the garden by name. Mary recognized Jesus when he spoke and she heard his voice. We recognize Jesus in the voices of our loved ones, in those who call us to new things, new energy, new life. Jesus told Mary in one of the stories of this particular moment that he was going ahead of them to Galilee where he promised he would. That he had told them earlier as he walked with them along the earthly road. The disciples had heard the words, I'll meet you in Galilee. And so Mary was the one to deliver the message to remind the disciples that they were called to Galilee to meet with Christ. The tomb was empty. Jesus wasn't there, and yet the disciples kept looking inside. Jesus' message isn't to only look back at where we were, but we recognize where we're supposed to go. Resurrected life is all around us. It's what God does. God renews and refreshes and resurrects new life all the time. We see it as the snowbanks recede and the crocuses pop up their blooms. Wherever we are, Jesus will be there with us. If we keep staring into the empty tomb, we'll miss the joy of the new life that continues. And so we continue to walk with the risen Christ. Wherever we go, wherever we gather, online or in person, at table, or on the couch. Jesus will meet us there, as he promised he would. The resurrection has come. Christ has risen. And that life makes it all worthwhile. For when the disciples thought that all was lost, new hope sprung out from the empty tomb into the life everlasting. That life is new and always newer. When all seems lost, the joy bursts forth from the empty tomb to turn our sights so that we can continue to follow the risen Christ. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. In great joy, with excitement, 
we offer our gifts to share the good news of Easter with the world. We share the light of Christ with all the dark places within us and around us. We give our gifts to honor the Christ who has come alive for us. We give gifts to honor God whose mission was not finished in death, but continues in life everlasting. With joy and excitement, we give our gifts. Let us pray together. God of great gifts, this day we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you thanks. With resurrection humming in our hearts, our minds are tuned to your song of peace. We joyfully present these gifts to you, a tangible chorus of thanksgiving, a harmony of hope for your kingdom come. Amen. Passover meal. We tasted the bitterness of slavery to death. This day we celebrate the freedom and life that brings joy to our hearts and our homes. With communion today we experience the resurrected Christ in our midst. We remember Jesus amongst us. As we gather at table together, online or in person, we gather remembering that today's gathering is a joyous one. Good news, celebrations everlasting because of what Christ has accomplished for us. There is no bitterness in this meal today. Instead, we enjoy the sweet savor of bread for the journey and a cup of blessing. God is with us. We are not alone. Let us give our thanks and praise to God, ever living, everlasting, always loving. Loving God, we thank you that today's communion connects us with you and creation and the pulse of life in the beauty of the world. As signs of spring bring hope to those who 
are looking forward to longer days of light and warmth. We come to this meal remembering the hope that you had for us from the very beginning of time. And we recognize that your plan was not finished in death, but you rose victorious and glorious from the tomb that threatened to hold you. God, we come with all the saints of all time and place. We gather at table together in space and time. And we recognize that you are holy. 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 Holy God. Holy. God of might and power. Blessed are the feet of those who bring your good news to our earth. Blessed are those of us who share in the goodness of your love and peace and justice. Blessed are we who live differently because death was not the end of your story but only the beginning. The story started off dark and dismal and tragic as Jesus was betrayed in the garden of Gethsemane. Just prior to that, he had sat at table with his disciples and instituted a new tradition that all who are Christians would celebrate together a meal reminding us that following God fills our spiritual needs. Jesus sat at the table and used the very simplest and most basic parts of a meal, the bread and the cup to remind us that the victory is not only for those <clears throat> who can afford the riches of life. Instead, in God's economy, the basic necessities are the richest of gifts because they remind us of Christ's body given for us and lifeblood poured out for us. And we come to the table as the disciples did with Jesus. All are welcome at the table. No human law can keep us apart for God has proclaimed our belonging as the children of God. And so we celebrate with excitement this age-old practice of communion. And every time we do, it's new because Christ is alive in us. Jesus took the bread and after giving thanks, he broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat this, remember me. 
And Jesus took the cup in the same way and blessed it and poured it. and shared it with his disciples, saying this is the new covenant, the promise of God for the forgiveness of sins. No more will we be divided, but together we will share in the communion of God, uniting us with each other and uniting all of us with God. The bread, the cup, the gifts of God. Holy God, thank you that you gave us this gift of communion, reminding us that communion is all about sharing bread together all about renewing our covenants and being blessed with your presence. May your Holy Spirit work with all of the elements on each of the tables that we are at today so that in these gifts we see your life and we recognize our lives of faith as they grow deeper. For we are the holy people of God, fed by God's holy things. And we thank you for the spirit that makes this meal special, that makes the remem the <laughs> that makes the memory of what's done here at this table, something that continues to feed us here and now and every day. For we are invited to commune with you through prayer in struggle, in freedom, in rejoicing. We give thanks for your spirit alive in us. We take this bread and this cup, remembering those who do not have the basic necessities. And we pray that you will provide for them using our hands and our gifts. We pray for those who seek justice. <clears throat> and we pray that you will end oppression and bring peace as we do what we can to live as your ambassadors in the world. God, we think of those who are isolated and ask that you continue to commune with them as we together celebrate online or by phone or with a note. God, help us to ease the loneliness of others who are trapped in tombs. Help us to remind people that there is hope beyond the pandemic. There is justice beyond the protests. That there is peace beyond the tensions and the wars in the world. And it's your filling of our spirits that helps us to be part of your kingdom together. 
we pray like grace before a meal, the words that Jesus taught us so that we can remember to be killed kingdom builders with you. As we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Broken bread. Torn to remind us of the broken body of Christ, given out of sacrificial and unending love. Take and eat this bread, remembering that this small symbol fills our spirits with hope and love. the cup of blessing poured out for each of us. Poured out to celebrate a new covenant, the forgiveness of sins, the joy of a banquet. This cup is the lifeblood of Christ poured out for us. Take and drink and receive the new life offered. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And we have shared in the power of life everlasting. Thank you, God, for the gifts you give, for the ways that we are strengthened for the journey, and for the example of Jesus, who suffered and died and rose again victorious, sharing with us the triumph of life. Sharing with us the glory and the beauty of our communion with you. Help what we've done now to stay with us and to feed our souls as we work for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. people 
we go into the world sharing the joy, the triumph, the victory of life over death, of light in the darkness, of God with us on the journey. We go into the world as Easter people sharing joy and hope that knows no bounds. As we go, may you be blessed by Christ, the resurrected one, and the spirit that works in us and through us each and every day. Amen.